Hello, everyone. Welcome to lecture seven on introductory statistics. Now, in today's lecture, we are going to talk about uh, additional descriptive topics in chapter three. Okay. So the first topic we are going to uh, cover is the z scores. So what is a z score? Now, the z score of a value is the number of standard deviations. So this value is away from the mean. Okay, so we have the z score is about a value. Okay, for instance, now we have this is the number axis and say that we have a sample mean or population mean, right? So this is our sample mean or the population mean. Now, another value is say this is x, okay? then we want to find the z-score of this value x. Now, what is that? You firstly, you want to find the difference. Okay, so what is the difference? That is x minus x bar, or what x minus mu, if it's a population version, right? And then you want to see how many certain deviations is this deviation? Okay, so that is going to be the number of standard deviations that this value x is away from the mean. Okay, so here is the formula given the mean, now x bar for sample mean, mu for population mean, and the standard deviation, s for sample standard deviation, sigma for population standard deviation. Now the z score of an observation x can be found uh, using the following procedure. So first we find the difference, okay? And then divide the difference by the standard deviation, okay? Now, in other words, we have the following uh, formulas, okay? So this is for a sample version. So if it is a sample mean and sample standard deviation, so we simply use z equals x minus x bar over s. Now, or we can say this one, right? So this is going to be the population version. So they are all what? X, first we find the difference, X minus uh, the, the mean, either it's a sample mean or population mean. And then use the difference to divide by the, um, divide this uh, difference by the standard deviation. Okay, uh, S for sample, and sigma for the population. Okay, now this is the definition of a z-score. Okay, now let's consider an example. Suppose we take a sample uh, from a growth of uh, recently planted Indiana poplar trees and measure their heights with the following results. So the sample mean is 14 feet and the sample standard deviation is four feet. Now we want to find the z-score of a popular tree with the following heights, okay? So A is eight feet. So what is the z-score of a height of eight, eight feet? So A, okay, how to find the z-score of this one? So what we want to do is we want to, we can find out, uh, first let's just draw a number line here. So this is, the, my x bar is equals 14, right? So here is a 14. And then this value eight is going to be somewhere say here. So this is eight feet. Now we want to see what, how many standard deviations this value eight is away from the mean 14. So what do we do? We take the difference, so eight minus 14 as a negative six. Okay, so that's the deviation from the sample mean for eight. Okay, now this negative six. Now, uh, how many standard deviations is this deviation? Okay, so then we can, what, find the number of deviations, standard deviations using what? Negative six divided by four, that's a negative 1.5. 
Okay, so negative 1.5 is the z score. Okay, now we can find this one directly using the formula. Okay, so how to do that? It is a, the z score is z score of eight feet is, okay, by definition, z equals what? x minus x bar over s is a sample version. So this one equals what? Now x is the original value. Okay, so x is the real actual value. x minus x bar, so which is eight here for a. So eight minus 14 divided by four and we find this negative 1.5. Now, since this is a negative, a negative z-score implies that the um, value is less than uh, the mean. Okay, x is less than the mean. So we know that eight is less than 14. Okay, so this negative 1.5, this means which means that eight, this number eight, okay, eight feet is what? 1.5 times the standard deviation. Below, okay, be careful because it's negative, right? So below the mean below the mean, okay? So that's by definition, right? The z-score of eight is negative 1.5. This means what? The, um, uh, this eight, uh, this number is what? 1.5 uh, times the standard deviation below the mean, or right? because it's negative, okay? Now B, similarly, we can find a B now 16. So it might be somewhere here. Okay, so this is 16 feet. Now this is the difference, right? So what we can do is z equals what? Here, x minus x bar over s. Now in b, my actual value is 16 minus 14 over what? Over four. So that is uh, two over four, which is 0. 0.5. Okay, so what does this 0.55 means? This means what? This is 16, okay, is half the standard deviation above the mean, okay? So 16 feet is half the standard deviation. Above the mean. Okay, so that is the z-score of 16. Okay, so as you can see, half the standard deviation is uh, half times four, that's two, right? So which means what well, 16 feet is two above the mean, which is 14. So 16 equals 14 plus two, which is uh, half of the standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so, that is the meaning of the z-score, the number of standard deviations that a value is away from the mean. Okay, that is the z-score, okay? So now, what if this is what? Given the value of x, we can find its z-score, right? So like this one, right? So we know, so what is the z-score of eight? So eight is given, so we, we can find out it's a z-score. So the z-score of eight is negative 1.5, right? A z-score of 16 is uh, 0.5, right? So that's given the value of x. We can use the formula to find the z-score, the corresponding z-score. Now, what if the other way around? So if I give you uh, the z-score, the value of the z-score, can you find its actual value? 
the other way around, right? So uh, here is what we have. We have okay? for the problem above. If the z score of a height is two point three, now what is its value, right? So this is now I know the z score. Now can you find the x value, right? So in this way, uh, now how to solve this question? Okay. Now let's see how. Now you want to do say okay. In order to solve this one, let x be what be its value. All right. So if x is its value, then its z score. is what the z equals okay x minus x bar over s which equals uh, x minus what 14 over standard deviation s is 4 this is what 2.3 right 2.3 so and then we can solve for x this is the equation about x so we can solve for x how to solve for x so what we can do is we can multiply four on both sides, right? So this implies if I multiply four, x minus 14 equals 2.3 times four, right? So, and then I can add a 14 on both sides. So this implies what? Uh, x equals 14 plus, uh, well, 2.3 times four, plus 14, okay. So what this equals is two. So this is um, 23.2, right? Uh, 23.2, and this is in what? In feet, okay, in feet. Okay, 23.2, okay. So uh, let's see how we find this value, right? So let x be this value, then the z score can be found using the formula and plug in the values for x bar and s. So that set it equals what? Because we know that it's 2.3. And then just to simply solve for this, solve for x, right? And then we got the value of x. All right, very good. How about b? Can you find, uh, can you solve for part b? Okay, so in b, okay, again, let x be its value, then the z score equals x minus x bar over s equals x minus what? Uh, 14 over 4 equals negative 1.6. Now this implies what? x, well, you can solve this one uh, again. All right, so it is, uh, in the end, you should get a negative 1.6 times the four plus 14, okay, plus 14. So this one will equals what? Uh, negative, uh, oh, well, 8.4 8 uh, this is 7.6. No. 7.6, right? 7.6 feet. Okay, so that is basically how we solve this problem, right? So the, uh, if the z score is given, we can find its value, okay? So uh, based on this example, we need to know both ways, right? Given a value, x value, we can find its z score, right? So for a, b here, so these are these type of question given, the actual value of x, we found its z-scores. Now, this one is given the z-score, we should be able to retain its original value x, right? By solving this, set up this equation and solve for x. Okay, all right. So now let's consider another example. Okay, suppose the diameter of a fiber optic strand a glass fiber capable of transmitting hundreds of thousands of times more information than a copper wire. It's continuously measured on an electronic assembly line such that the mill 
Well, here be careful. The meal is a population mean, right? The meal is a population mean. It's 3.112 millimeter. And the sigma is 0 0.008 millimeter. Now, we want to find the z-score of a fiber uh, strand with the following diameter. Well, it's, it's A, all right? So, so let's consider A here. Now, find the z-score of a fiber optic strand with a diameter of 3.120 millimeter. B, if the z-score is negative 1.2, what is diameter, right? So uh, here is A is to find the z-score of a value. Now, like what we did, we can just simply plug in the formula. So that is what X minus mu. All right, be careful. Mu is the population mean. And over sigma, which is the population standard deviation. Now this one equals, okay, the X value here is 3.120 minus mu 3.112 over sigma 0 0.008. Now, we can find this one as a 0 0.008, which equals one, right? The z-score is one, okay? Now, z-score is there's unit list, or it is unit list, okay? Because it's a ratio, uh, then this is unit list, or it's simply one. So what does that mean? That means what? My value 3.120 is one standard deviation above the mean, right? One standard deviation above the mean. This is true. Zero equals what? 3.112 plus one times what? Uh, 0 0.008. So you can see that this is the mean and plus uh, one standard deviation, right? So which is the actual value, which means the standard deviation, this one, or is a z-score, it means what? Uh, this value 3.120 is one standard deviations above the mean, okay? This is A and B, okay? So if the z-score is negative 1.2, what is the diameter, right? So uh, here again, let X be its value then we have the following equation. So the z-score is x minus mu over sigma equals x minus 3.112 over 0 0.008 equals negative 1.2, okay? So, and then this implies, okay, x equals negative 1.2 times 0 0.008 and plus 3.112. And you can find this value, right? So uh, let me get a calculator and find out this one. So let's see, what do we get? Okay, so using the calculator, it is negative 1.2 times uh, 0.008 and plus 3.112, okay. So what I get is 3.1024. And this is in what? Millimeter, okay. This is in millimeter, okay. So the value, the z-score has no, is unit list, but the original value x has a unit, all right, it's a millimeter. Okay, very good. This is the z-score, right? So given a value, we can find its z-score. And if we, uh, given its z-score, we can also recover its original value. Okay, so both ways. Very good. Now here is a tribute of the theorem. It, uh, it gives us a general, a rough estimate about uh, the distribution of the data. Okay, um, it states like the following, if we have for any data set, okay, whether it's a population or sample, no matter what its shape is. Now, if we have the mean and the standard deviation, 
Okay, then we can state, we can say that at least 75% of your data will lie within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so, and what? At least 89% of your data will lie within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so in other words, here, as you can see from this uh, plot here, all right, so you have what? This is a number of standard deviations from the mean. So from negative two to positive two. So that is what? Uh, within two standard deviations of the mean, right? Two standard deviations below, two standard deviations above the mean, okay? So within this uh, two standard deviation of the mean, so we know that at least what? 75% of the data, okay? So now if what is within three standard deviations of the mean, Okay, so three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above the mean, then that is what? At least 89% of the data. Okay, at least 89% of the data. Okay, so that is Chebyshev's theorem. All right, so it gives a rough, uh, rough, um, rough, uh, uh, rough estimation of, uh, of what? The distribution of the, about the data uh, in the center, around the center around the mean, right? So if it is two standard deviations of the mean, at least 75%. If it is uh, three standard deviations of the mean, then at least 89%, okay. Now, next is the box and the whisker plot, or we say box plot, okay? So uh, essentially the technique attempts to divide the data into four equal groupings, you know, four equal groups, okay? Now let's see how we can do so using the following example. Now, suppose a random sample of a small business owners were asked at random, uh, uh, asked at what age they first became self-employed. A tally of this, the results is presented below. Okay, so these are the age, okay? Now, the first step we are gonna do is to list all these values in an increasing order and then locate the median, and the middle value. So that is what we have, okay? Now, uh, we got to be careful, all right? List all these values in an increasing order and then locate the mean, median. Okay, so what is the median? Do you remember? The median is the value in the middle, right? So if um, there are two different cases, depending on the number of values, right? So if the number of values is an odd number, it is the one in the exact middle. If the number of the values are even, then it is the average of the middle two. So how many values are there in this group? Okay, so we see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, twenty, three. Okay, so we have 23 values. So 23 is an odd number. It is an odd number, right? So therefore uh, the middle value is uh, 23 plus one divided by two, that is 12. So we are going to have the 12th value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so 29 is in the right middle. Okay, so you will have what? 11, two is left, 11, two is right, and plus 29, that's in total 23, right? So uh, well, that's, uh, therefore the median is 29, okay? The median is 29, okay? So that's our first step. We list the values in increasing order and then locate the median. Now here, if we have an odd number, even number, then the average of the middle two are the median, okay? So we're gonna show that in another example. Now the second uh, step is to uh, do the following, all right? So mark off the lower half of the data. Now be careful, including the median, uh, including the median, okay? So the median is 29, so as you can see, I the lower half includes 29, okay? And then you want to locate the left hinge, right? defined as the median of this 
lower half. So you want to find the median of the lower half, including 29, all right? So what, how many values are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So in total, we have 12 values in the lower half. So 12 is again an even number. So the median is going to be, uh, there are two, well, 12 is an even number. So it is going to be the average of the middle two. So that's the left hinge, which is 25.5. Okay, 25.5, that's the left hinge, okay? Now, similarly, we are going to have the higher half or the upper half, including the median, all right, including 29. And then again, you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 of them, all right? So we are going to have the median, which is 32 and 32. So the average of these middle two is a 32. So therefore the right hinge is 32 as well. Okay, 32. And um, uh, so after we find the left hinge and the right hinge, now we are going to have what? Uh, this circle here is the minimum value, right? And we got the left hinge, the median, the right hinge, and here is the maximum value. Now, we are going to use these five values, all right? Use the five values, the minimum left hinge, median right hinge, and maximum um, to construct the box and the whisker plot as below, okay? So what do we do? All right, you have a scale, scale the line, right? So uh, in the bottom, and uh, you want to have what? The min minimum value, Okay, at point 0.21, the left hinge is 25.5, median is 29, and um, the right hinge is at a 32, and the maximum is 41, okay? And then what do you do? Okay, so in between the left hinge and the right hinge, you draw a box, right? You draw a box, and inside the box, there is a line located at the median, okay? So you have that, and then, use the dotted line extended to what? The left median, the minimum to the edge, to the left edge, and also the right side towards the maximum using dotted line. And this is a what? A box and a whisker plot, okay? So, and from these five numbers, and you can see, okay, uh, this is what? The left, the smallest, um, the smallest quarter. Okay, see so you see that median separates into halves, and then the left hinge separates the left, the lower half into halves. So, therefore, between twenty one to uh, twenty five point five, that is the lower quarter, right? Lower quarter, and from the left hinge to the median. That is the second quarter, and then the third quarter, and finally the top quarter. Okay, so basically, using these five numbers, five values, we separated the whole data set into four equal groups. Okay, four equal groups of, the, of similar sizes. Okay, so basically, that's what we have here. Okay, the minimum left hinge, the median, the right hinge and the maximum value, okay? Very good. Now, let's consider another example. All right, see if we can construct a box plot. Now, uh, 14 different second year medical students at a hospital measure the blood pressure of the same person. The uh, systolic readings are listed below. Use the given data to construct a box plot, okay? So here, uh, we're going to follow those three steps. What do we do? Okay, step one, list the value in increasing order and locate the median, right? That's our first step. And then second step, mark off the lower half and uh, locate the left hinge. And uh, mark off the upper half and locate the right hinge, right? And then step three, use these five numbers to construct a box plot. Okay, now let's see how we can do do, uh, how can we construct a box plot using this data? 
Okay, step one. Okay, step one. Uh, list. In an increasing order and locate the mean or the median. All right, look at the median. So, what do we have? The smallest value is, I believe, it's 120. And there is another 120, or right, be careful, 120, 120, and then what? Uh, 126, 25, okay, and 126, 126, and what, 130, uh, 130, then what, 135, another 135, and what, 130, that should be 140, right? So should be 140 and um, another 140 and 143, 144, um, 148, 149, and 150. So is that right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Okay, fourteen of them. So we're good. So these are the um, the listed, uh, the ordered list, right? Since there are fourteen values. Okay. So the median is what. The median is, okay, the average of the middle two. So 14, that's the sevens and eights. Four, five, six, seven, and eight, right? Seven and eight. So the median is the average of the middle two. So 135.5. So that is our step one. All right, we listed the value in increasing order and also we located the median. Okay, so, and then step two. In step two, we are going to mark what? The lower half, including the median. Okay, including the median. Now, do we have this median in our original list, 135.5? No, right? So 135.5 is not in the original list. So um, we got to add this median in the list, all right, to the list. Okay, so add the median in to, uh, to the order the list. Okay, what do we get? Okay, so 120, 120, 125, 126, 130, 135, 135 and, oh, sorry, here's 137, 137.5, 137.5, right? And 140, 140, 143, 144, 148, 149, and 150. Okay, so now if the median is the average of the middle two, which is not in the list. So we got to add this 137.5 in the list so that we have the lower half, okay, including the median, okay, include the median, okay. And also uh, from this, how many are there in the lower half? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight of them in the lower half. So the left hinge equals what? Equals the average of the middle two, right? So it is 126 plus 130 divided by two, which is 128. So 128 is the left hinge. Now, similarly, we can find the uh, upper hinge, the right hinge, right? So 
Markov, uh, the uh, the uh, upper half, including 137.5. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, there are eight. So therefore the right hinge equals what? The average of the middle two here. So that's 143 plus 144 over two. So that's 143.5. Okay, so this is a right hinge. Now, we got all these five numbers, right? So the minimum, 120, the left hinge, 128, the median, 137.5, the right hinge, 143.5, and the maximum, 150. Okay, so these are five numbers are uh, we, we just found these five numbers. This is the second step. Okay, this is in the second step. And then finally, the third step. Okay, step three. Right, use these five numbers. Okay, the mean, uh, the left hinge, the median, the right hinge, and the maximum, and the max, right? So use these five to uh, construct the box plot. Okay, so uh, what shall we do? So firstly, we have a scaled uh, axis here. Okay, so I believe the minimum is what? The minimum is 120, the maximum is 150. So we make sure that these minimum and maximum are covered. Okay, and then I'm gonna have, say here, and here, okay, so this is going to be 130, and this is 140, right? So let me just, uh, in the middle, this is going to be 125, here middle, 135, and 145. Okay, so this is a scaled uh, axis. And then I'm going to uh, locate those five values uh, above this axis. So the mean is what? means 120, so I'm going to just, uh, for now, I'm going to just uh, add a point here for the minimum. And then the left hinge is 128. So 128 is about here. Okay, let me just draw another point above 128. And then the median, 137.5. So let's see. 37.5, okay, it should be somewhere here. That's the median here. And then what? The right hinge, which is 143.5, 143.5. That is somewhere here. Okay, and finally 150, right? So the maximum is 150 here. So I'm getting these five points. Okay, these five points um, in a line above this scale. Okay, then I'm going to draw a box. Okay, so along what? The left hinge and the right hinge. Okay, let me just draw a square box. Okay, so, uh, okay, sketch. This is the box I have. Okay, see that? Okay, let me just make it good. Okay, so it is like this. Okay, this is a box, okay? With the left edge, left side, uh, along the what the left hinge and the right hand side goes through the right hinge okay and also in the middle there is a vertical line across the median okay so this is the median location the location for the median and then we are going to use the dashed line segments to ex connect the minimum to the left side of this box and also from the maximum to the right side of the box. Okay, and then we got this box plot. Okay, so 
we have here is the mean, right? Uh, here is the left hinge. And this is the median. This is the right hinge. And this is what? The maximum. Okay, so we got this uh, um, uh, box plot. Now, let's just reveal what we did. Okay, so similarly, like the, before we step one, list all these values in increasing order and locate the median. Okay, that's what we do in step one. And then in step two, we add the median to the ordered list. Okay, and also uh, find the uh, left hinge and the right hinge. Okay, left hinge and right hinge. Okay, and then after we got all these five values, five numbers, we use these five numbers to construct the box plot. Okay, like, like the one below. Okay, very good. This is how we construct a box plot. All right, so next, we're gonna talk about the quartiles and the percentiles. Now, what are quartiles? Now, similar like a box and the whisker plot or box plot, the quartiles, okay, attempts to divide the data into four equal groups, similar like that. Now the procedure is almost identical. Only now, okay, the left and the right hinges are called Q1 and the Q3 in quartiles are established as follows. Okay, so you, the overall meet, median is the second quartile denoted by Q2. Okay, so like here, uh, it's a Q2, okay? Now Q1 is the first quartile and uh, is the median of the values to the left of the overall median. Okay, to the left, not include, does not include the median value. Okay, does not include the median value. <clears throat> Similarly, Q3 is the median of the values to the right of the overall median. Okay, now <clears throat> Q2 is not included. Now here is this example is what? Two for, in order to determine Q1, so uh, you get what is the median of the values to the left of 29. So 29 is not included this time, right? So then what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 of them, which is an even odd number. So number six, 25 is the median of the lower half, right? So of this one, not including the median. So Q1 is 25. The first quarter is 25. Similarly, for Q3, so it is the median of all the values to the left, to the right. Okay, to the right of 20 of the median. So that's all these ones. Now again, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven of them. So the middle one, 32, is our third quarter. Right, so we will have Q1 equals what 25, Q2, uh, Q2, which is the overall median is 29, and Q3 is 32. Okay, these are the three quartiles. The first quartile, the second quartile is the overall median, and the third quartile is 32, which is the upper quartile. Okay. Now, as you can see, quartiles separates the data into four uh, groups, okay, into four groups. They are the cutoff point of these uh, uh, four groups. Now, to generalize this, we also have the concept of percentiles, okay, percentiles. Now, it is a method used to divide the data into 100 approximately equal groups. Okay, so similar like quartiles is to divide the data into four approximately equal uh, groups. Now percentiles is divide them into 100 equal groups. 
Okay. Now let's consider this example. Now find the quartiles of the data in the previous example. Okay. Now uh, let's consider this example. Okay, solution. The you know the procedure is almost the same as uh, for the box plot. Okay, so the only thing is the difference to locate what Q1 and Q2. Well, in quartiles, we do not include the median. Okay, so let's consider this one. So uh, we again have step one is list all the values in an increasing order. Okay, and uh, locate the median. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, again, it's the same, right? So 120, 120, 126, 130, 135, 135, 140, 140, 143, 144, 148, 149, 150. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Okay, we missed one. So what is that one we missed? 21, 20, 120, 125. Okay, we missed the 125 here. So here's 125. Okay, so let me just reshort this one. 120. 120, 125. Okay, so this is good. All right, so now similar like what we did before, um, the median is, okay, so there are 14 scenes. There are now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 14 values. The median is is well, the average of these two, all right? So it's 135 plus 140 over two, so 137.5. Okay, so this is our median, which is Q2. Which is Q2. So Q2 is found in the first step. Then step two is to find what? All these, um, uh, these uh, what the uh, Q1 and Q3. Okay, so let's add 137.5 into the list. Okay, adding 137.5 to the order the list. So what do we have? 120, 120, 125, 126, 130, 135, 135, 137, 0.5, 140, 140, 143, 144, 148, 149, and 150. Okay, so we add the median here, which is a Q2, okay? Now, here is something different, okay? Now, how to find Q1? All right, this is the median of the values to the left of the overall mean, okay? So do not include the median. So we are going to have what? The median of the values to the left of the median. Okay, so now how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them. So Q1 is what? The median is 126, okay? Now here similarly, Q3 is the median of the, all the values to the right of the median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so. 
144, right? So therefore we have what? Q1 is 126. Now here is Q2 is the overall uh, median, right? So 137.5 and the Q3 is 144. Okay, so these are the quartiles, Q1, Q2 and Q3. So the first quartile Q1, the second quartile Q2 and the third quartile Q3. All right, so this is how we do that. Okay, so uh, that's all for today's lecture and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.